All right, boys and girls. So I finished up the Paradox Hotel last night. Not normally a big time travel fan, but I actually kind of like this one, which probably should tell you how good it was. If you have an issue with time travel novels, no, this isn't going to be a five star for you. It's not a five star for me, but it's darn close. So this book was put out by Rob Hart. Uh, basically, what you've got is that you can kind of insert the uh, whole idea of, of the Loki shows. So somebody's invented time travel, who, whose name has escaped me at the moment because I listened to this in audiobook. And yeah, that uh, has all of the problems that are often associated with time travel. So they invent the TEA, which if I remember correctly, is the Time Enforcement Agency, but don't quote me on that. Um, and they do what you think they do. They go around and uh, go after people who just want to break the, uh, look, don't touch rule because we all know what happens when you, you touch the timeline and, uh, also try to fix any of the screw ups people have managed to put in place. So this is where we start with January. She is one of the TEA's best agents. However, time travel has a side effect where if you do it too long, your mind becomes what they call unstuck. You're not traveling in time right now, but your brain still doesn't see time linearly anymore. You see things that happened before you got there and hear, and hear things. And uh, sometimes you see things that haven't happened yet, which to most people make you sound a little bit crazy. However, as always, uh, we have the biggest threat to the timeline coming up. January sees bits and pieces, but never enough to know exactly what's going on. And so, of course, she has to act upon these because the fact that it's hard to convince other people of stuff that only you can see. And uh, yeah, that makes people think you're a little bit crazy. And so she keeps ends up ends up getting in trouble because she's reacting to things that aren't there. She's doing things she can't really explain why she's doing them while she's trying to track down what's going on and fix the problems. And uh, the problems are starting to bleed into everybody else's reality, too. That's how big the timeline is screwed up. It's not just her that's unstuck, but absolutely normal people are starting to see things that happened years and years ago and uh, to the point that they can actually affect things. So life is a little bit crazy. Uh, January's got a... a or a sad backstory. Uh, she's lost the person that she's loved. She didn't have a great childhood. So now she's pretty much convinced herself that she doesn't need any help. After all, if you don't need anyone, it, it won't hurt if you lose anyone. But yeah, this is uh, this one's a little bit over her head. She's going to eventually have to uh, bring some other people in to help her out. People that care enough about her and obviously, let's face it, know enough about time travel that they understand that unstuck is really a thing. And yeah, um, she's got a limited amount of time to do it, not just because of the fact that the timeline is unraveling, but because uh, unstuck has stages. And the third stage, which she is rapidly approaching, is when your brain just can't process the fact that you're seeing time in a, in a non-linear way anymore and just shuts down and you pretty much end up trapped inside your own body. So she's up against the clock. No, no, no pun intended. Like I said, normally I'm not a huge time travel fan. Obviously you run into all the paradoxes by the name. Nice job, Rob, uh, naming the hotel Paradox Hotel. I, I really enjoyed that part. Yeah, he manages to avoid most of the pitfalls that I normally run across in these timeline ones. Uh, does a very good job of interweaving things that we've seen earlier in the book, because of course her brain is unstuck, and then all of a sudden bringing them back into play when she actually gets to that point. Uh, when you listen to it in the audiobook, sometimes that'll throw you off a little bit, because all of a sudden you're like, wait, didn't I hear this already? I'm like, oh yeah, duh. But yeah, Rob handles it really, really well. So like I said, this is, for somebody who doesn't like time travel, this is the best one that I have seen. Okay, H.G. Wells might, might, might have a better one, but that's a classic. Come on now. Also helping this book, as, as much as I don't like audiobooks for the fact that I find them hard to remember, uh, this book was read by 
Let me get her name right. Emily Wu Zeller. And Emily does an excellent job uh, of the voices, keeping everybody straight. I have to say she did one voice, and maybe it was because I was listening to it at uh, a little faster than one speed when I got toward the end. Uh, reminded me very much of a character from Wizard 101. I almost wanted to see if I could reach out to her. I was like, did you also voice this character? But maybe she did, maybe she didn't. But if you've heard Abby K. Doodle, there's a part in there that sounds like it. That's all I'm saying. So what am I going to say about this one? Uh, like I said, I gave it a four star. This one, it, it's not a five star simply because, and I think this is hard for time travel ones. Once you know that's what's going on, for me, a five-star is one that stands the test of time and you want to reread over and over again. Downside of certain like mystery novels and time travel novels and things like that is once you get to the end and you know everything that was happening, the rereadability is kind of uh, downhill. So I think it's very hard for them to pull off a five-star. So a four-star for time travel for me is very, very good. I enjoyed it. It's not going to be for everybody. I know some people that absolutely hate time travel. Uh, they don't like trying to keep track of what's going on and when. They just want a nice linear story. This is not that. If you if you know if that's not your cup of tea, uh, run away. If you do like time travel, or if you've always thought that you'd like to read a time travel to uh, sometime, this isn't a bad place to hop in. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it, and yeah, I'm kind of gonna have to check out. What else uh, Rob Hart has in his uh, bibliography there? Because if he can do a time travel novel well, uh, I'm guessing that he can do the rest of his books pretty darn good too. All right, that is it. It is about time to get started for work here. So I am going to shut up now. And uh, I hope all your reads are five stars. Have a good one, guys.